public enemy number one, Anopheles, the malaria mosquito, wanted for willful spreading of disease and theft of working hours, for bringing sickness and misery to untold millions in many parts of the world. This tiny criminal is linked to the destinies of man in a cycle of disease transmission that could not exist without either man or mosquito. Each is solely dependent on the other for the existence of the dread malaria. Anopheles is readily distinguished from other mosquitoes by the fact that she stands on her head at an angle of 45 degrees or more. This newly hatched female has not yet touched human blood therefore does not contain malaria. But if we follow her, we'll soon learn how she becomes a malaria carrier. Like all thieves and killers, she works best under cover of darkness. Locking and barring doors and windows will not keep this hungry prowler out. She can enter through a small crack. What will she find to steal here? Only a little blood, which this man, racked with the chills and fever of malaria, will never miss. Assuming her typical angle of 45 degrees or more, she injects saliva to make penetration easier. And in a few seconds, she begins to feed. But this man is sick. Along with his blood, she's drinking in the parasites, which cause malaria. Gorged with disease-laden blood, she makes her way to some cool, dark place where she will rest for several days and digest the blood. Although the blood is digested, the disease parasites are not harmed in any way. On the contrary, they multiply to great numbers. Hungry again, she flies out as evening falls in search of blood. This time she carries with her the malaria parasites with which she is infected. Enjoying the peace and plenty of the home he's worked so hard to build, this man is healthy and happy. Little does he suspect he's to be the victim of this bloodthirsty vampire. Again, saliva is injected to make penetration easy. But this time, the saliva contains malaria parasites, which enter the bloodstream. She dines on healthy blood, and in payment, leaves the chills and fever of malaria. In all probability, this man will not die, but neither will he truly be alive, for he'll be continually in poor health, unable to work and keep up his farm. Slowly, he will lose all he has worked for. His crops will rot in the fields. His buildings and fences fall into disrepair. His livestock will be neglected, and he'll be unable to earn the money to feed and clothe his family. Multiply this man's tragedy by numberless cases all over the world, and we have millions of dollars lost, as well as untold misery for the victims. And all because of this tiny criminal, which has assumed the proportions of a monster. Are there six or seven people in the audience who will volunteer to help us combat this evil? Good. Well, thank you, men. But before we can attack the enemy, there are certain facts we must know. The first and all important fact is this. The Anopheles mosquito must have water to lay her eggs in. These eggs float about and soon hatch into larvae or wigglers, which lie parallel to the surface where they feed and breathe. In this larva stage, the mosquito is easy to control. After seven to 10 days, the larva becomes a pupa or tumbler and can still be controlled. But once she emerges from the pupa as an adult, she can slip through our fingers and become a menace to human life within a mile of her birthplace. All right, men, now we can begin to fight. start by cutting the weeds where the mosquito lays her eggs. This makes it easy for the fish to get in and eat the wigglers. 
spraying oil on the water is a sure way of killing mosquito larvae of all kinds. The oil enters the breathing tube and promptly kills the wiggler. Those are wigglers, Dopey. Give them the oil treatment. That'll kill them. Dusting with Paris green is an effective way of killing wigglers and is economical for covering large areas of water. A thin film of Paris green is strong enough to kill the wigglers without poisoning the fish. Mosquitoes must have water to breed in. These pools will always be a menace to our health unless we drain the water away. <laughs> There's one way of doing it. Even this hollow stump can harbor mosquito larvae. Say, that looks like smoke. Let's go in and see. Attaboy, Dopey. Spray all the dark corners and under things. You'll find mosquitoes where you least expect them. Yes, we've got to kill everyone in the house. The permanent way to get rid of breeding places is to fill them with dirt. If you want to keep the rain barrel free from wigglers, let's put a screen over it. By covering the cracks in the walls with building paper, we can keep mosquitoes out. Anything that holds water for a few days is a likely breeding place for mosquitoes. And we can't afford to take any chances. So we're going to bury these cans. To be safe from malaria, we must put screens over all the doors and windows. Screens can save you a lot of misery. Atta boy, dopey, killer, good and dead. To avoid being bitten by Anopheles, we must put netting over the beds. Then we can sleep in safety. Don't let her get away. She's a killer. Yes, even the small cracks in the floor must be sealed. And so we leave them to enjoy their well-earned rest free from the annoyance of mosquitoes, safe from the dread malaria. Contrast their peace and happiness with the misery and sorrow of this unfortunate plague-ridden family. These people have lost everything simply because they failed to take a few easy precautions. Remember, there is only one cause of malaria, the mosquito. Destroy the mosquito and you will wipe out the disease. Then, in place of sickness and poverty, there will be health, safety, and happiness.